Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. Who is considered the second greatest British personality of all time? When the BBC did a poll in 2002, they expected somehow that Winston Churchill would be in that top 10 list. But there, in second position, was someone whose name was reasonably unfamiliar. A name that didn't belong in this century, nor from the previous century. A man who was born in 1806, somehow, mysteriously, found his way to the second spot. His name? Isambard Kingdom Brunel. He was one of the most famous engineering minds of all time. And Brunel, he built a magnificent ship. And it was called the Great Western. At the time of its construction, the Great Western was the longest ship in the world. There she sat at 236 feet with one stunning goal in mind, to cross the Atlantic. The trip was to start from Bristol in the UK and then terminate in New York City in the United States. The goal was audacious because no one believed in the commercial viability of such a long journey. Despite many technological developments, shipbuilders presumed that a ship had limited capability. They believed that no ship could carry both commercial cargo as well as enough fuel to make this very long journey across the ocean. In the 1830s, there was a competition to be the first to cross the Atlantic, powered by steam alone. The Great Western should have been well on its way, but it ran into difficulties before leaving Bristol. There was a fire on the ship. It was a minor fire, but Brunel was hurt in the fire, so he wasn't able to make the journey. As a result of the fire, 50 paying passengers canceled their trip. Finally, the ship made it out of Bristol's harbor with just seven people on board. What's worse is that it was four whole days behind its competitor, another steamship called the Sirius. The Sirius left as scheduled, leaving the fire-stricken Great Western still in dock. Now, the Great Western and her crew were well and truly behind, and Sirius would get all the glory. But Sirius's trip was anything but glorious. Along the way to New York, Sirius ran into serious trouble. They started to run out of fuel. Her crew was forced to burn cabin furniture, spare yards, even an entire mast because of this fuel problem. And they took 19 days to get across the Atlantic. The Great Western, in comparison, arrived like the Queen of the Seas. She took just 15 days and five hours, and she had a third, that's almost 200,000 tons of coal to spare. This is a story about journeys, a writing journey in particular. I didn't want to write. My story is one about being nudged and pushed into writing. When we started out our first website, that is our first marketing website, I was writing for a fledgling portal called marketingprofs.com. Back in 2000, everyone was a fledgling and there wasn't much content online. 
as there is in this moment in time at least, which is why the founder of Marketing Profs, Alan Weiss, he would email me and he'd ask me for an article. This meant that I had to write. I didn't want to write, but I didn't have much of an option. We were new in the business, we just moved to New Zealand, and the only way that I could get any credibility in the marketplace was to get my name out there. And I ran into difficulty almost instantly. Every article was a real trouble, something I detested, yet I persisted. Over the years, I've learned that sheer determination and persistence is not enough. That engineering and planning, that makes the biggest difference to the journey. And we're going to cover the journey today, what I've learned in article writing over the years. And we're going to cover three elements as always. The first one being why a coach and editor are incredibly crucial. Not just any coach, but how to find that coach and editor. The second is why writing for yourself is a tedious process and you need to avoid it. And the third is why the one word concept is your compass in the darkness. So let's start off with the first one, which is why a coach and editor are incredibly crucial. Whenever the topic of child genius is brought up, one name rises above them all. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. This kid, we are told, was a prodigy. Before the age of six, he was already composing music. Most kids barely find their way around school at this age. And yet, we are told... Mozart was already competent at playing the piano. He could play the violin. He was also rumored to have transcribed entire scores of music after a single hearing. How much of this is true? How much of it is stagecraft? We don't know. But one thing we know for certain, Mozart had a coach. You don't think of a coach when you hear the name of Mozart, do you? Yet, Mozart's coach was his dad, Johann Georg Leopold Mozart. And Leopold Mozart wasn't your average let's play music kind of dad. He was already a famous author on violin playing. He was already celebrated enough to be the deputy director of music to the Archbishop of Salzburg. Plus, there was nannery. That is Mozart's sister. When Nanarui was just seven, her father decided to give her piano classes because he believed that she was gifted. So there was Mozart, baby Mozart, surrounded by all these incredible musicians, but primarily coaches. Without coaching, you can go far, but it takes a lot of time. So when you read studies that quote the concept of 10,000 hours to mastery, what fails to emerge is this factor of mistakes. As a beginner, you're expected to make mistakes. You aren't aware when or where you're making the mistakes. All you feel is this frustration, this resistance that ships often felt back in the day of Isambard Brunel that something is wrong with the engineering, but you're not sure what to fix. And if you can't figure out where the mistake lies, then you run into all kinds of trouble along the way and limp into what seems to be like an article harbor. So coaching is valuable, that we already know. What's hard is knowing how to find a great coach. For me, this process of finding a coach has been streamlined to a single factor. Skill versus information. I call it preacher versus teacher. Is the coach going to give you more information or is he or she going to give you a skill? Alex Bloomberg, ex-Planet Money, 
is also the co-founder of Gimlet Media, and he's a coach. How do I know that? Because in the world of telling radio stories, Alex doesn't pound you with needless information. Instead, he has a method, even a formula of sorts. For example, when telling a story, he shows you how to evaluate a story. Let's say you're writing a story about homeless people. How would you use his formula? Well, first you have to know the formula. The formula runs like this. The story is about X and it's interesting because of Y. When we take the X, the story is about homeless people. That's the X. And it's interesting because of Y. What is Y? That 20% of them are college graduates. Notice how it instantly gets your attention. The why, why is it interesting? That's what gets your attention. If we took that same line and ran it, maybe put something else in there, and you say, the story is about X, which is homeless people, and it's interesting because why many of them have these mental problems. Now, immediately you notice it's not that interesting. So the first one was more interesting than the second. And that's what Alex has. He has this formula. So he's giving you the ability to create a skill for yourself, to evaluate your stories, evaluate your paragraphs, evaluate whatever you're putting down there on paper, on radio, or anywhere else. So in his courses, he goes about things systematically. He talks about editing. He talks about music. And then what you end up is not a lot of information, but specific skills. When you look at the Mozarts, you look at the Phelps, the Brunels of the world, they all had coaches. Coaches that enable them to find their mistakes and then move forward. And in article writing, going it your own way is the slowest boat to anywhere. I know, because I took that boat. I took that boat in the field of cartooning, in the field of article writing, in so many fields. And it took me ages to figure out the connectors, the first 50 words, the endings, the beginnings, the structure. All of that article writing misery could have been reduced if I had a coach. A coach that had a system who would then point out the errors and get me quickly down the road. To me, of all the skills that you have to learn as an entrepreneur, Article writing stands out because you have to have a precise structure when writing. You have to be interesting. You have to tell stories. You have to stand out in a sea of content. Which is why even today, I will go to workshops. I will buy a course. I will read books. Because that's how you get better at what you do. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that without a coach, you're floundering. Even when you think you're pretty good. To get outstanding at what you do, you have to find a Johann George Leopold Mozart to help you along. And that brings us to the end of this episode. Yes, it's a very short episode, but the three parts, they go over 40 minutes and that's much too long. So we're cutting it short at this point in time. And as you've noticed, this is also a re-release. So there's a story behind it. Well, I released it as a whole part and my wife, Renuka, she listened to it on our walk today to the cafe. And she said, no, you've got to get rid of this part and the music's too loud in that part. And then you're pitching 5,000 BC for much too long and you need to cut that out. And so she went through five or six points and of course, now here I am at 4.30 in the evening editing. And you may ask, well, wasn't it 70%? Wasn't it good enough? If she goes and finds five and six errors, then it's not good enough and it needed a re-edit. So what we'll do is we'll continue this episode in the next section. So this part really talked about coaches and what I would recommend you do right away is find a coach. Find someone who can help you. But without the editor, you're not going to get the feedback like I got today. And then clients will listen to your podcast or read your article or read your book. 
and they'll think, well, this person could have done a whole lot better. And often you just get one impression, even in the podcast. Maybe some of you have been listening for a while and okay, you'll overlook one podcast, maybe two podcasts, but there will be people who will be listening to this podcast for the very first time. And so making that first impression, it's critical. Now, there is a line between procrastination and perfection and just editing. And if your editor finds so many mistakes as Renuka found in this podcast, then you have to go back and fix it. And that's what I've done. And that will take us to the next episode where we'll explore the next two facets of writing and the stuff I've learned over the years. That's me, Sean D'Souza, saying bye for now. And yes, I know, it's a very ironical episode. A good editor is priceless. <laughs>